Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Hyde, lipidologist with CardioSound. And today I want to talk about heart disease and what to do after the heart attack. Um, I think the most important th uh, thing to do after a heart attack is to ask the right questions. We talked about asking the most important question after a heart attack, and that is, what are my chances? What's my prognosis? Since we covered that in another video, we won't talk about the risks that people face after a heart attack. Today I want to talk about the second most important question, and that is, what causes my risk to be high? And here, the, the big question is, what causes heart attacks? Now, when I ask that question, most people answer, blockage. Blockage causes heart attacks. And so, when you leave the hospital after your heart attack, that's what they tell you. You had a blockage, and we fixed it, right? We're going to monitor you from time to time with a stress test to see if that blockage comes back. But really what we're talking about is two different types of blockage. And they're not the same and you need to understand the difference. Why? Because what they fixed when you had your heart attack may not be the same thing they're looking for when you have your stress test. So let's look at the small area of an artery. The blood cannot flow through the blockage, so it's called obstructive blockage. And that's kind of redundant. If it's blocking the blood flow, it's also obstructing the blood flow, right? This picture shows plaque that's blocking the blood flow. Arterial plaque actually builds up slowly and gradually over time. And eventually, it starts to cause symptoms. The guy who has chest pain and shortness of breath when he exerts himself can't exercise as well as he used to. And he's going to call his doctor about it. And he'll get a stress test. An exercise stress test will show whether he's got obstructive blockage. And if he has the blockage, then he's going to fail the stress test and get an angioplasty in a stent. No surprises here. No sudden chest pain. No drop in dead. Because this blockage is called by plaque that builds up slowly. And let's call this blockage plaque blockage. There's another type of blockage, though. And that's when the blood flow is stopped suddenly by a blood clot, what we call a thrombus. So, when you have a heart attack, what is it that causes the blood clot? A vulnerable plaque is an area of the plaque that's vulnerable to rupture. It's vulnerable because it's composed of this soft, gooey stuff, like jello, just under a thin cap. And when the thin cap ruptures, it's like a little explosion that leaves a laceration on the inside lining of the artery. Now that inside lining is called the intima, and the blood is usually completely surrounded by this cocoon called the intima. And the blood's just not used to seeing tissue. So what happens when the blood flows through that laceration on the inside of the artery and it sees that gooey stuff? What do you think is going to happen? What's the blood supposed to do when you have a laceration? It clots right? So when the blood clot gets bigger and propagates, in a few moments, that blood clot can shut off the blood supply to the heart muscle, and that's the heart attack. So we've got two different types of blockage or obstruction. There's blockage that develops gradually and slowly over time. We would call that plaque blockage. And then there's blockage that develops all of a sudden. Uh, in moments, it can cause you to drop dead because that blockage is caused by a sudden clot. Now, I want to ask this question. What type of blockage causes most heart attacks? Plaque blockage or clot blockage? What would you say? In most patients, 90% in this study, moments before the heart attack, the blood flow was fine. There was no obstruction. It was clot blockage, not plaque blockage. According to another study, 86% of heart attacks occurred in an area where the, there was no problem with the obstruction of flow, there was no blockage moments before, and then suddenly the clot blocked everything. 86%. If 86% of heart attacks happened in people who would pass their stress test the day before, and if they had a heart catheterization the day before, it'd be normal, then most heart attacks are not caused by obstructive blockage. Let's just say that plaque blockage did cause most heart attacks, it would follow that by fixing plaque blockage in people who didn't have any symptoms, 
putting stents in would prevent heart attacks, right? That's what you'd expect if fixing plaque blockage prevents heart attacks. But two huge studies, the COURAGE trial and the ischemia trial, both showed that fixing plaque blockage with stents is no better than medical therapy. It doesn't prevent heart attacks unless you're having symptoms like chest pain or unless you have left main disease, which is rare. So why is this so important? Because the language we use makes a huge difference in what we do. Everything that you do to prevent another heart attack depends on this question. When we ask, what causes heart attacks? We've talked about clots. We've talked about what causes the clot, that vulnerable plaque ruptures. What is it that made the vulnerable plaque get there in the first place? How did it develop? Inflammation in the arteries is what causes plaque to develop and build up slowly over the years. Inflammation is what causes the plaque to become vulnerable. What causes it to rupture and form a clot? Inflammation is what causes heart attacks, not blockage. The blockage is the result of the inflammation. So if you just had a heart attack, you got a stent. That stent really only solves the blockage problem and it only solves that in that one area. Stents can't fix inflammation. So unless the sources of the inflammation are identified and neutralized, your arteries are going to continue to get worse. So remember this one thing. Inflammation is what causes heart attacks. We see people who say, my blockage was fixed, my arteries are fine, and my doctor said there's nothing to worry about. But the inflammation is still there. It's still going to be making the plaque worse over time. You can't fix your artery disease until you fix the inflammation that's causing it. If you want help identifying the source of your inflammation, feel free to contact us. We can help you with that. Thanks for listening.